five of you that managed to unsubscribe simultaneously in the time span of one hour. I'm not hurt, I'm just impressed. Hey lads, my name is May and today I'm going to be talking through my year 12 psychology VCE survival guide. I did year 12 psychology as an accelerated VCE subject in 2020. I ended up with a raw 43 so while I do know what I'm talking about most of the time please take what I say with a grain of salt. There are obviously people that were more successful than There's me. There's going to be so many different ways to study and revise out there. So what I have to say might not necessarily be for you but that being said it did really help me and so I wanted to share those things with you today. Now, it is of my personal opinion that you should not be entering VCE without some sort of to-do list or planner. If you can somehow scrape by without it, I fully commend you, but this is a lifesaver for me. This isn't just a psychology tip, it's an every subject tip. It's also really important at the start of the year to set a goal for yourself. And while most people would tell you to be realistic with your goal, I definitely think you should. I would also say be ambitious, go for it. I had two goals going into psychology. I knew I would be really, 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 really happy if I got over 40, and I knew that I would be content if I got 35. To be honest, I am gonna cry if it's below 40, but we'll be fine, we'll get over it. So, my goal was 35, but I knew that if I got the above 40 mark, then I'd be really happy with myself. So definitely have a chat with your teacher, have a look at what's achievable, and ask for past students' grades. At my school, it's quite common at the start of the year for the teacher to present anonymous grades of the students of the years before, so we get a rough idea of what grades equal what study score. If you're curious, I got an A plus for units three, four, and the exam, and that got me the 43. So that would then tell you if you wanted to sit roughly where I was above 40, you would have to aim for the A pluses in the units and the exam. Just try and find a good mix of ambition and realism. Please stay on top of I it. I can't stress this enough. Trust me, this is coming from the queen of procrastination. I understand. But seriously, it will save you when the exam comes around because you will have already done everything. So I'm talking about study book. I'm talking about Ed Rollo questions and video. Do them the night of, and if not, finish up the whole week's worth on the Sunday, on the weekend. It's not gonna help if by the time the sack comes around and you haven't done any of the notes and you have to use a whole day to do all of the notes and you have no time for revision. If you keep up to date with the notes you'll have plenty more time for revision and by the time the exam rolls around you will be up to date and that will be the least of your worries and you can focus on the studying that really matters. Now of course everyone goes about this in different ways but this is how I worked out how I would learn the content. So first of all prepared for every class, come prepared for every class. We had to print out PowerPoints for every class that might be different at your school. But I came to class with my PowerPoints all done. And I was very active in class as well. I would ask questions when I wouldn't understand something. I would be the first person to put up my hand and answer the question. When you've got your hand up and the teacher says, yes, anyone other than you, you know you're on the right track. Really try and engage with the content. A really useful tip that my psychology teacher used was you need to come up with examples from your own life. For example, we study Parkinson's. My grandpa had Parkinson's and so whenever I had to list a symptom I would think of him and how he acts. I have a very strong visual image of Parkinson's because I'm able to relate it back to him. Or with long-term potentiation and long-term depression. I formed the neural connections for learning guitar when I was younger so even though I've had a break it takes me a lot less time to relearn the content because my connections are already formed. Also, oh my gosh, please enjoy the content. I love psychology so much. Doing VC has prompted me to go into further research with it in university. I just, I love studying it and it's my favorite thing. In fact, I would do it all over again. I have such a passion for it and I really hope you find that passion in psychology as well. I think it is the most fascinating thing to have the privilege to study at school. So please try and find a way to enjoy it. Okay, so you've kept a to-do list, you've kept up to date, you've learned all the content, and now it is time for revision. This can be quite a daunting thing because I definitely did not know how to revise going into psychology. I'm not sure I really know how to revise now, but these are the sort of things that I did to help myself. I believe that the only passive revision you should be doing is taking notes and watching the Ed Rollo videos. You may find rewriting all the notes really helpful, but that's not something that I found. I'm quite a hands-on learner. I can't learn something until I 
physically do it myself. And so active revision was definitely the way to go for me. First of all, I think you should be the kid that puts up your hand and says, yep, I'll make a Quizlet for the class. Research has shown that people learning information that they believed they were going to teach to other people learned the information far better than the people who just thought that they themselves were going to be tested on it. If you are making a Quizlet for your class, every information every bit of information has to be correct yes it's hard yes it's painstaking to flip through the textbook and find every definition but to sit there and make the quizlet perfect for other people made my work output 10 times better no i didn't do the quizlets myself but i made them and i made them perfect and that's what helped me learn the content do every single textbook adrollo question you can get your hands on. i know how annoying this is believe me and i have gotten very very frustrated with christy kendall at times but by repeatedly getting in those key terms and those strong answers you're going to train yourself for the exam and after you've done the questions mark them and any question you got wrong any marks you missed out on rewrite the question rewrite the question with the right answer and then use the wording from the textbook or from the practice exam. Unfortunately, a large part of this subject is understanding how VCAR wants you to write. If you can work out their little mark scheme, then you have a very high chance of ticking those boxes and getting those marks. You might know the content, you might be an expert, but if you can't tick those boxes, it isn't gonna translate in your exam. And then the last big thing I did in my revision is a technique called blurting. I got this from Unjaded Jade. It's basically the concept of writing out all the information you need to know on a blank piece of paper and then all the information you missed you write out in a different colored pen and then you keep repeating it until you're no longer missing any information this is really 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 good before SACS, but it's also extra good before the exam can you write out the entire study design on the whiteboard yes you can and you will you'll do it <laughs> that's something that my teacher had me do a couple days before the exam and i thought she was insane but it seriously seriously worked not only did it test me to get those scraps of information that i was missing but i could find my weak points and focus on those and it gave me so much confidence to look at such a big whiteboard and see so much information that i like i had put in my noggin and memorized and knew how to apply to questions filled me with so much confidence and I think is the one thing that gave me just true confidence walking into that exam because I'd done the work, I'd stayed up to date with Ed Rollo and I just felt confident and that I could do it. You might also find it helpful to take the weak spots or missing spots from your blurting and keep it on a separate piece of paper. I'll show you actually. Ooh. So this is all my psychology work. This is my study book with all my notes. So I went through and rewrote most of the study design down on big bits of paper. I know I said that rewriting didn't really help me and I don't think it did. It did help to kind of wheedle out the niche bits of information from the textbook. So I'm not sure if I recommend this or not, maybe try it out. So yeah, I did a lot, a lot of work and there's so much content. Yeah. <laughs> but this is what I wanted to show you. Basically, I went through and I wrote out every uh, chapter or section in the textbook. Um, and then I went through again in green and I wrote down all the bits that I missed. You can see all that. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot there, I won't go through all of it. But in the end, I ended up with this right before my exam. I memorized it, I had my boyfriend test me on it the night before, reread it in the morning before my exam, and just like that I had the entire study design memorized. It's a lot, I know, but you can do it. You'll be right. <laughs> Next, I have some sort of top secret tips, I guess. I don't really know what to call them. It's just a little collection of some really niche underground information that I was able to figure out that I think really separated me from that A to that A+. So first of all, I counted all of my marks and I showed the examiners or whoever was marking my practice exams where my marks were. All right, this was my final sack. This is just an example. The behavioural model proposes that phobic anxiety could be the result of learning. Identify two learning theories and explain the relevance in the development and or maintenance of a specific phobia ensuring link to relevant P factors. It's fine if that doesn't make any sense, but I'm just going to use it as an example for now. So this question is worth four marks and there's two components. So identify two learning theories and explain. So we're going to assume two marks go to identifying each theory and two marks go towards explaining them. And as you can see, one mark, I've identified it. Two marks, I've explained it. Ooh. One mark, I've identified it. And two marks, I've explained it. Four marks, I ticked off everything and I got the four marks. It may be nitpicky and a bit funny. And I'm not meaning this to sound like the people marking won't know where to find the marks or anything like that. I'm just saying they have less chance 
or you have less chance of not getting them if you're pointing out your thought process and saying this is where I think I got the marks. Also, like I said before, try and get your head around VCAR and how they want you to answer questions. Go through past practice exams and everything and there will definitely be a structure to questions. I bet you if you get a question on the exam that's like, oh so and so burnt their hand on a Bunsen burner and pulled it away without realising, you're gonna have to identify it as a spinal reflex, you're gonna have to talk about sensory and motor neurons and the messages they carry, and you're gonna have to identify the response as involuntary. Just little things like that, it will become such a habit you'll know it off by heart. Try and identify the structure of questions and exactly what they want you to talk about in the question. This also ties in with knowing key terms and definitions. Sometimes you can get away with vague definitions but most of the time you do need these key terms to get the full point. So for example I memorized long-term potentiation is the long-lasting and experience dependent strengthening of synaptic connections. I think. <laughs> so I chunked that out so I'd go LTP long-lasting experience dependent synaptic connections and then I'd put it together. <laughs> and finally, if you do want those good marks, try and get your head around the really, really small information. It seems insignificant, but it's kind of like the sprinkles on top of a cupcake. It's the little things that sometimes kids miss or get wrong. So the sensory neurons don't go to the spinal cord. The sensory neurons send sensory messages to the spinal cord. LTP is the strengthening of synaptic connections, but LTD is not the weakening of synaptic connections. LTD is the weakening of the response of the postsynaptic neuron. Read through notes for the past exam. Try and work out what it was that made the students stand out to the examiners and what got those kids the extra marks. Oh, and quickly before I go, I just wanted to mention a key bit of information that really, really saved me. So I was a geek and an overachiever um, in the holidays before uh, school started last year and I answered every Ed Rollo question in chapter one for research methods. And the whole year I was like, mate, why did I do that? That was so excessive. But then the exam rolled around and the 10 marker was on research methods. It, I think it saved me the exam and it got me the A plus, if I'm honest. I know research methods is really boring and you'll probably do it in Head Start and it's not really talked about, but please get it under your belt because it will help you a lot. Also, it'll really help you when it comes to the lab report at least when we did it, it wasn't really covered again or explained, it was just assumed knowledge. So that pretty much sums up May Moss's tips on psychology. I keep wanting to stress this, please, oh my goodness, have fun with it. Like I said, I would do it 10 times over again, I love it so much and I'm planning on continuing it in uni once I finish year 12. It is such an amazing subject, I love please it. Please feel free to take these tips on board, please feel free to not. Again, this is my singular personal experience. If you're unsure about something, probably check with your teacher. I also want to clarify that I did this year 12 subject while I was in year 11, so it was pretty much the only subject I was focused on and I had the time to sit there and do all of the practice exams and all of the revisions. But that being said, I really do hope you found this helpful. If you have any specific questions at all, please ask me. I'm really passionate about this and I really want to help you guys. Because of COVID, there were some things that were taken out of our study design, like I think insomnia and stuff like that. So I might not be able to help you with all of it, but I can definitely help you with about 70% of it. So please, oh my goodness, ask me in the comments or send me a message on Instagram or you can email me. I have those linked downstairs. But please just know that you've got this in the bag. You do, you can do it. I have full faith in you. Your efforts are supported by the universe. The more drive and effort you put into this, the better out you're gonna be. Better out. I don't think that's right. <laughs> better off better off you're gonna be. And yeah, I think you're gonna be absolutely fine and you're gonna smash it. So thank you very, very much for watching. I am making the commitment to read an educational article every time I upload a video. So if you would like to join me in that endeavor, it'd be greatly appreciated. I'll have everything linked downstairs. With that being said, thank you very much for watching. You're gonna smash psychology this year and I'll see you in the next one.